Hello, and welcome back to our series of interviews with viewers, members, and colleagues around the world. It's a great pleasure to introduce you today to Jenny Hogan from the Relocation Consultancy. Um, we've known each other for some time, and it's really nice to see you again. It's, I always say, is connection and communication is key at the moment. First of all, can you tell everybody where you are and how you've been affected? Right, so we're based actually in Berkshire, but we do DSP work for the whole of the UK. We're quite a small DSP. There's three of us that work full time, and then obviously we have our list, you know, our consultants that, that work all over the UK. Um, so, so I think obviously we were affected the same as everybody else when the lockdown came into place. It, there was sort of murmurings about it and we could see what was going on in in Europe and uh, everywhere else so we sort of knew it was coming we had clients that we were already working with that some of those have been put on hold for the time being and then we had clients where we had to sort of go ahead and you know do the check-ins etc um, or, or check-outs um, we have had uh, well, going back to sort of how we coped as a business and what we've done with our time, um, it's always useful to have an opportunity like this to catch up on housework, not just in the house, yeah, but yeah. in the business. Yeah. So we have been sort of focusing on um, looking at our processing, looking at our guides, looking at case studies. Um, keeping active on social media to, to remain visible. Uh, we have had to furlough one member of staff, um, but that makes sense for us at the moment and hopefully it won't be um, for too long. I think from the furlough point of view, um, also obviously a lot of the people that we deal with, our partners that we work with, that refer work to us and that we work with, agents, um, they, they've half of them have all been furloughed as well so <laughs> you've not yeah, got yeah. the uh, the uh, um, conversations going that you were having yeah. going before the lockdown um, but we're in a we're in a very lucky situation we already work on a remote desktop so we can work oh, really? anywhere. so we didn't have to do any of that sort of planning at the last minute because we already uh, all of our files are held on a data bank and we look, log in and all of our emails are on there. So from that point of view, it didn't really um, have a massive effect um, on the day to day how we um, ran our business. Um, and we had a really good year last year. So we're in a good position where we, we have got reserves. So it was in the most seen as, OK, let's use this time to... Um, look at the business, look at how we do our processes, stay in touch with all of our clients and assignees um, and, and be there and be as helpful as possible. The other thing that we've done, which is um, quite nice, I think, from a sort of corporate responsibility point of view, is we've all joined the NHS volunteers. Oh, brilliant. Um, and also our local COVID sort of support groups. I live in a village, so I help neighbours and friends and get prescriptions and shopping and, you know, mobile phone top ups I've just been asked for <laughs> to do. And so we're sort of quite busy. So I'm sort of dividing time between working and helping. Volunteering. That's absolutely brilliant. I, I, it's, it, so just for people who don't know, the furlough process in the UK is like a government scheme that allows yes. you to claim up to 80 percent back of salary when does how long does that scheme go on for do you know i think it goes on till june right so we started claiming it from the first of april but the first payment is due within the next few days so i think you had to put my accountant did it i have to say because yeah. they were yeah. our payroll um so i think you had to get the claim in by today I believe, and then you're, you're supposed to be paid six days later, but we'll wait and see. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's a huge, I mean, for yeah. a scheme of this scale, because it's yeah. so, I mean, I think something like 30% more people have been furloughed than was expected. Yes, by yeah, so, yeah, 
Yeah. yeah. But that's, I mean, yeah. if, and how did you manage that with your team member? Was it like, that was all fine? It was like, yes, we totally understand. We talked about it beforehand, actually. And actually we talked about taking pay cuts. So right. yes. um, this worked out better from yeah. a business perspective. Yeah. Um, so, um, that's good. you know, very, I was very lucky. Yeah. It, it is interesting having, you know, when I've been doing these interviews, the, the massive disparity between what's available from country to country to country. Mm. Um, so, yeah, you know, we, we have been very lucky. I was talking to Dino Sani yesterday in Italy and, you know, support is very, very minimal. Um, so obviously there's a, a different level of positivity, you know, mm. happening around our industry, which is very interesting. The yeah. Other thing I, I wanted to just ask you was in that process, like you say, we knew that lockdown was coming. We had yeah. probably a couple of weeks, but yeah. there was that weird thing to begin with where was it going to be the herd immunity approach? Was it going to be? Yes. Yeah. When it happened, um, I'm just fascinated by the human stories of the people who were in process with you at the time. Like, did you have people in, in hotels, in corporate housing that were about to move into places? Did you have to suddenly speed stuff up? Was it, or was it fairly straightforward? It was fairly straightforward where we were with um, a lot of our clients at that time. They either hadn't left, you know, they hadn't come to the UK or we were sort of, we squeezed in the home search. We did a couple of unaccompanied. We did have a situation with a key worker um, up in Barnsley, actually. And I have to say that agent was brilliant. Okay. Um, and uh, because it, they were a key worker, um, they actually took them out and showed them a particular building that, that um, suited their purposes and actually did a face-to-face -face viewing with them, obviously with the social distancing. And that key worker was moved in within three days. So that was, that was really very good. Very smart, yeah. Yeah, we did have another um, situation with a client who um, was in the UK, in London, and his family had already gone back to the state, so he was staying here for another six months, right. uh, you know, uh, and then transitioning back with his work. Um, and he'd gone out to see his family and he's stuck. He, he can't come back. Well, he's decided to stay there, so yeah. he, he can't come back. So his apartment in London the lease runs out at the end of May, but he had a lot of his personal his belongings. Stuff. There, yeah, sure. His stuff. So the, the bulk of the stuff we can't move until um, lockdown starting to be lifted and we can get um, the uh, uh, removers in. But we, um, one of our consultants and, and the agent, we got keys FedExed over from the states, and because the agent, although they had a set of keys, all their offices are closed. Oh, yeah. One, I think, in Hyde Park, right. um, and he couldn't find where the keys were or whatever. So the client FedExed the keys back, and then our consultant went in, did a video call with the client, and then he said, "Right, yeah, can you pack that back?" Ah, there? Yeah. <laughs> That's what I need now. Yeah. And they FedExed a couple of boxes of stuff back to him. So uh, that's the resourcefulness of our industry. Yes, uh, never exactly. seems to impress. It really does. Yeah. It is yeah. fascinating. I mean, I was talking to Martina Shala yesterday, who's our consultant for quality, and she was saying her daughter, who she's based in Frankfurt, her daughter was at King's College in London and flew home just, just before lockdown, you know, she did yeah. be on her own and flat in Marlon. Um Get this, so yesterday she flew back. She got on a scheduled flight, a Lufthansa flight to Heathrow. Wow. Got into the country without any problem, got on the tube, got back to her flat, start studying again. So yeah. I had no idea things like yeah. that were even happening. You know? No, Still no, young. no. I think there is more movement than we than probably we think. think, but the majority of people just want to stay where they are. Correct, absolutely. Yeah. I think so that's absolutely true and from that point of view just you know for people how how has lockdown been accepted in the uk in your view from from the assignees or from people well, no, from the general population really. um generally i think very well i 
slightly insulated. Like you, I live in a village. Yeah. Um, uh, we can walk from the house into the countryside very, you know, two minutes and you're in fields and um, countryside. And everyone's being very, very sensible here. We have a local supermarket and they do the social distancing and the, you know, m limiting the number of people going in. Yeah. Um, but on the whole, you know, you see people and you wave and, you know, you sort of call across, you have a conversation, you're two or three metres apart. And yeah. everyone, I think, is being very sensible. That's what it's like here. It's interesting. It's, um, and again, you know, the, the resourcefulness of the local community, like, so our local farm shop is now doing click and collect. You yeah. send in a form the day before, you have your three boxes of veg and fruit, and great. Yeah, really yeah, cool. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so we were talking about, um, you know, before the call, uh, before the recording yeah. about, you know, the end of lockdown and what's going to happen. I wanted to ask a couple of things, because first of all, you know, talking to colleagues in Germany and Switzerland and certain countries, uh, Denmark, they're being given very clear deadlines. By May the 4th, schools mm. will be back. By May the 12th, this will happen. But, you know, mm. we're not getting any of that in no. the UK. No, no. Although, um, obviously, this week, B&Q have opened up a lot more of their stores. And then there was an announcement yesterday that a couple of big... Um, construction companies are going to start yeah. opening their sites from next week I think right. um, and uh, I think some of the it's not official government advice but some of the rumours I've been hearing are that after May the 8th which is the Friday bank holiday oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. following week then some types of businesses will start to reopen a bit. Interesting, very interesting. That's very interesting what we say about B&Q, for people who, who don't know, that's a big box DIY yeah. store, like Home Depot in the US. Yeah. And that, that, that's, yeah, okay, that's mm. uh, any progress. Things yeah, are, yeah, so, so I think they've, they've got 150 odd stores open. Huge opening. company, yeah. Mm. And mm. in terms of like, how are you, are you, like when you're thinking, you said you were going over your processes and using this time yeah. productively. What are you thinking about in terms of processes for resuming work? Well, that's the, the interesting thing. And that's what we've been, where we're sort of seeing now other European company, uh, countries starting to open up a little bit and release the, um, reduce the lockdown requirements. This week, we've been focusing on how we're going to work moving forward. Obviously with relocation, it's a people to people business. Um, and, you know, taking people out in cars, that, that's what it's all about. So there will be um, an element of unaccompanied searches so that we're not putting our consultants at risk and the clients at risk. Um, but I think we're sort of looking a step forward from that even when we can start taking people out in in cars it will obviously require uh, depend a lot on the agents and when they're opening up availability of properties because there's a bit of a shortage you know it's all sort of just yeah. stopped yeah. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how the market picks up again as things start coming out of lockdown but um one of the things we were talking about was so from a protecting staff point of view uh putting together we put together a disclaimer letter for clients to sign and in it there it is sort of asking them to sign to say they haven't got any symptoms they've not been around anyone with symptoms um they'll let us know obviously uh, on the day we're talking about asking them to take their temperature on the day of the home search um, and using masks yeah. and gloves yeah it's interesting I've got a very good friend in Washington uh -huh. and he's continued to work all the way through although they're in lockdown there and he's a real estate agent uh -huh. and he said that the directive from there is that they can still show houses as long as there's no more than three people in the house at one time and they have to wear masks and gloves. Yeah, yeah. 
So, and he's worked through I mean, the whole sort of lockdown process. It's, it's extraordinary how things have changed. I mean, I've got um, very good friends in DC, well, in Virginia, actually, but you know, yeah. Um, yeah. And it varies so much from place to place, right? But I think what's, so what I'm just, for your information, we're, I, that, the reason I was talking to Martina Shava yesterday in, yeah. in the conversation about her daughter was because we're trying to put together a policy, like yeah. just a rough, a, a rough guide yeah. for members, like, you know, what you do in terms of best practice, in terms of being yeah. in the car, wearing gloves, having masks. Um, but obviously this is all dependent in some ways for, for, you know, for a lot of the business in our industry on aviation opening up. Mm. Um, and that's why I was encouraged yesterday to hear that Lufthansa are still flying. Yeah. Pretty yeah. Well everywhere. Yeah. Well, we're still accepting flights into the UK and have all the way through. Yeah. So it's more the other hubs where they're coming that's from. Right. Yeah, um, so, uh, yeah, that will be interesting to see. And I think when we were discussing this in the week and I speak, I've been speaking to consultants, agents, you know, just trying to get a view of how people think it will work. It's more about how people feel com comfortable working yeah. as well. So with our consultants, it would be, you know, for instance, do the client sit in the back of the car and you sit in yeah. the front of the car? Exactly do we limit it to one person? You know, so if you've got a couple, just one one member of the uh -huh. family go out. Um, but I think initially, certainly it will be managed on a case by case basis, yeah. as in what the client's comfortable with and what the consultant's comfortable with. Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, that, that raises another interesting point. I've been talking to Gordon Kerr, the, you know, our legal yeah. consultant about, you know, what are you know, what are the rights that have to sit in place? What are the kind of legal nuances you have to get into if a consultant says, like, I'm really not comfortable with that? I mean, obviously, mm -hmm. you know, with a company like yours, you know those people really well and yes. you would work that out yeah. on a case-by-case -case basis, which yeah. is really all you can do. Right? And I think what I was discussing with some consultants yesterday is perhaps when, with a one-day home search, for instance, instead of staying, having a whole day out in a car looking at properties, you split it so... Half of it is done remotely on online with like a phone calls, uh, Zoom calls, etc. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. maybe they put together the program, and the agents that have got the video, the virtual yeah. properties, because the the consultants know the houses, know the agents, know the areas. So rather than taking them to see ten properties, perhaps they could have half of their session almost as an online yeah, session absolutely. discussing the houses looking at the videos and then narrowing it down to three or four houses that they actually go out and see yeah yeah i'm absolutely. a bit worried about losing the personal contact completely you know saying because that's what our industry what is all do. about yeah. and i think you know the, the what clients gain being out in a car with a consultant discussing the area talking about life in the uk exactly. you know i i'm a bit worried about losing that if if we say right we're just doing unaccompanied mm -hmm. but again perceptions change moving forward so if you look at how we felt a month or two months ago um to where we feel now in a month or two months time yeah you know people might be have a different idea about how comfortable they feel with certain situations yeah absolutely i mean this is if you know it's it's going to be a very i mean it's a straight it's going to be a strange new normal for quite some time mm -hmm. um and like you say you know i mean i i don't know for you but i remember that when we went into lockdown even though we'd been planning for it for quite some time yeah. it was still a shock it was like yes yeah yeah i can't do what I'm, but yeah. you know it's um it's, yeah, yeah, we'll 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 get around it. But no, great. I mean, it's 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 good to start thinking about how we are all going to start. Yeah, I around. think we're sort of going into the next phase now. We had mm. the phase before lockdown where we started doing the social distance. Yeah. Go, you know, exactly. wash your hands, singing happy birthday, yeah. and and no sh handshaking. And then we're into lockdown, and now gradually we're thinking about coming out the other end. 
Yeah. And, and, and these new procedures are probably going to have to stay in place for quite some time, you know, to moving on into the year. It's not just going yeah. to be a month or two. It's no. probably going to be a little while. So, um, yeah, so uh, like you, and I'd be really interested when you get sort of some best practice sort of guidelines yes. together, because nice. I've been working on that this week as well. Yeah. You know, so... Uh, well, this is what we thought, you know, and again, funny enough, most of the things you've touched on are exactly the things that Martina and I were talking about yesterday. Yeah. Clients in the back of the car. Yeah. Um, but another thing she said was from, I mean, Martina is, you know, she's a quality implementation auditor. And she said, it would be a document where you basically say to all of your clients, there will be no exceptions. This is how we're going to yeah. continue with our processing. But like you say, it's a human industry and one-to-one -one contacts. Yeah. Uh, and also, I think, like I said, it depends what, who feels comfortable with what yeah, yeah. you know there might be consultants that think actually I'd rather you sit next to me because then your breath is going forwards <laughs> <laughs> whereas if you're in the back of the car you're breathing on to me yes or, that's true. you know that's something true. like that so um it's going to come down to common sense isn't it really yes I think feel. it is yeah it's very interesting I think it is yeah yeah Listen, it's really lovely to catch up with you. And um, so, I'm, you know, it's, it's great to hear your positivity. And, you know, it's, um, it's been a funny old time. Um, yes. We'll continue, but I'd love to come back to you and talk again in a few weeks' time. See, see where we are and yes. how it's going and, you know, what you're doing. Yes, Brilliant. super. Listen, lovely to catch up with you. You take lovely care, stay well, stay you. safe, and enjoy the sunshine. It's very sunny in the UK, as you can see. <laughs> Speak soon. Bye. Take Thank care. you. Bye. Bye.